thanks to our witnesses for testifying today. Uh, you know, COVID has been an unprecedented crisis and Congress's response has been unprecedented as well. Congress has passed five bills in response to the pandemic. They've provided almost $4 trillion in relief. The most recent $900 billion bill was signed into law less than two months ago. And all five of those bills received overwhelming bipartisan support designed to prevent the economy from spiraling into a crisis and to facilitate the economic recovery that we've needed. And let's be clear, the economy is in recovery mode. The unemployment rate that was 15% in April is 6.3% in January. As of December, 18 states had unemployment rates below 5%. And we've seen strong economic growth these last two quarters and the consensus forecast for the year we are in now is likely to exceed 5% real economic growth. Unfortunately, despite all this, President Biden and our Democratic colleagues are pushing a $1.9 trillion bill that is completely detached from any kind of economic reality. The bill is not designed to find common ground. In fact, the procedure that's being used to pass it pre virtually precludes common ground. And unlike previous bills, it's, uh, it's not an economic relief bill as its size and its content bears no relation to the economic circumstances we're in. For example, the Democrat plan for small business aid would spend billions, tens of billions, when billions have already been spent and are still available. The Democratic plan includes spending another $15 billion for economic injury disaster loans, $10 billion to restart the Obama era state small business credit initiative known as SSBCI, another seven and a half billion for the paycheck protection program known as PPP. But Congress has already provided over a trillion dollars in relief for small business. And just two months ago, Congress gave $248 billion for the hardest hit businesses to apply for a second round of PPP loans, another $20 billion for EDA loans, $12 billion for the minority depository institutions and the community development financial institutions to invest in low and moderate income communities. And the MDIs and the CDFIs won't even be able to push these money out the door. The $12 billion that we already gave is 50 times the annual amount of the CDFI funds. And billions of these dollars are still available. As of earlier this week, more than $140 billion of PPP loan money is available, untapped. As of yesterday, none of the $20 billion for IDLE has been dispersed. And it's doubtful that much, if any, of the $12 billion for MDIs and CDFIs has been put to use. And yet they want still more money. There's no need for the $10 billion to restart a program, the SSBCI, that was tried and failed. That program was operational in the early 2010s and results were very disappointing, as is often the case with government programs. It was slow to launch, inefficient at deploying the capital. Loans and investments often took months or years to reach small businesses. And we know that they won't be able to get money to small businesses quickly now. The program is also riddled with all kinds of problems. The audits by the Treasury's Inspector General and the GAO point to a program that was wasteful, inefficient, poorly managed, and more fundamentally, the program is objectionable on its face. Unlike PPP, this program is not about providing COVID relief since it makes funding available for years after the expected duration of the pandemic. In fact, CBO estimates that only 8% of the $10 billion meant for the SSBCI will be spent in 2021. And unlike PPP, it's not about keeping employees on payroll since it contains no such requirement. Program is just a means for the government to allocate credit. Uh, in addition to misusing taxpayer resources for things like SSBCI, the Democrat plan is rife with provisions that will actually harm small businesses and workers, their employees, and the recovery that should be that is underway for example the 15 dollars an hour minimum wage that's an increase that's going to not only harm small businesses but prevent low-skilled workers from getting their first job cbo projects a loss of 1.4 million jobs and maybe as high as 3.7 million today we have two witnesses who tell us more about the damage that they believe will occur if we have a 15 million dollar minimum wage I'm looking forward to hearing from Joel Griffith from the Heritage Foundation and Danny Ritchie from my home state of Pennsylvania uh, on this matter. Um, another important point to make here is that 
our Democrat colleagues that this bill is not targeted to provide the temporary aid <clears throat> that uh, has resulted from the pandemic. According to CBO's estimates, only a fraction of the $1.9 trillion will be spent this year. Among the spending items under the Banking Committee's jurisdiction, CBO estimates that in 2021, only about half of the $19 billion for rental assistance will be spent. Only 8%, as I said, of the $10 billion for SSBCI will be spent in 2021. Only 5% of the $5 billion for emergency housing vouchers will be spent in 2021. And, and this one's just incredible. They estimate that 0% of the $5 billion for homeless assistance will be spent in 2021. What Do, do they think that this pandemic goes on for, for decades? I mean, this, this makes no sense. And then of course, there are the provisions that have absolutely nothing to do with COVID under any circumstances, like $86 billion to bail out multi-employer pensions, $100 million earmark for a subway in Silicon Valley, $135 million for the National Endowment for the Arts, $50 million for environmental justice grants, whatever that is. Um, look, small businesses and workers don't need a $1.9 trillion bill that is wasteful, not at all targeted, and largely unrelated to COVID. And they certainly don't need to lose job opportunities by virtue of a $15 minimum wage. So rather than ramming through a partisan, bloated and, and uh, unnecessary spending bill, we ought to be focusing on lifting government shutdown orders, reopening our schools. And the one thing I think we do agree on, distributing vaccines as quickly as we possibly can so that businesses can reopen, workers can go back to work and people can go back to normal life. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.